Uh, now, the reason I wanted to talk to you in the light of what the Home Secretary was just saying there, as an extraordinary story has emerged today, that Patsy Stevenson, uh, she was that flame-haired girl with the red hair uh, who was dramatically pinned to the ground and handcuffed uh, at the Sarah Everard vigil on Clapham Common back in March. Uh, she made all the front pages. Uh, she says that since then, 50 coppers have contacted her on Tinder and liked her. Now, we're talking about cop culture here, toxic cop culture. This would seem to me, Peter, to be a classic example of it. What are these serving officers doing contacting this girl on Tinder? It's inappropriate and wrong, isn't it? Well, I'm not familiar with Tinder because I'm an old bloke and you wouldn't expect me to be. But it's a dating um, app. <laughs> Yes, yes, yeah. I knew what it was. All the more reason why I've steered clear of it. Um, and, and but clearly, the, this this young lady has made quite a sweeping allegation on the radio, alleging that because this number of police officers have liked her, that there could be something sinister behind it. Now, I can understand why she might want to make such a statement, but really as things are at the moment, there is not one shred of evidence to support that. I suspect she has many, many thousands of likes because, of course, her profile went sky high when she was thrown to the ground and handcuffed on Clapham Common. Um, and if people are going to make statements like that, it's often very helpful, always very helpful, to have it supported by some kind of evidence. Now, please... Don't think for a moment that I would ever defend the indefensible. And if it is found out that it was done as some kind of intimidatory tactic, then, of course, that would cut right to the heart of a culture within certain sections of policing, which we all know has got to change. Uh, you know, she, she uh, sort of opined that it might be intimidatory uh, but it could be just that uh, you know she, she's an attractive woman a very striking picture of her all, all over the front pages and uh, a few coppers sort of took it upon themselves to get in touch and even then I think that that should be stopped I don't think I think that the police use of social media uh, dating apps, I suppose, in terms of people who have been arrested, uh, should be looked at. Uh, you know, p p coppers should behave in a d different manner to the rest of us. They, they should have higher standards of behaviour than the rest of us. You're absolutely right. But, of course, an off-duty police officer within the confines of his own home or garden is allowed to get drunk whilst he's off-duty, to have a laugh, to let his or her hair down, they are, after all, human beings, and they are recruited from us because they are us. Um, however, of course, we expect higher standards from our police officers. Not do we only expect it, we demand it, and we should get that. And in the vast majority of cases, we do. But the police as an organisation tend to be pretty slow sometimes in getting the feel for something that is new, a new trend. And, and I think with regards to social media, we have found that some police services are still clumsy, send out unclear messages, and quite frankly, officers don't know whether they should be on it or shouldn't. Yeah. I mean, quite a few officers are taking it upon themselves to sort of tweet out about stuff that's happened to them while they've been on the job, uh, you know, stories and uh, arrests, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, I would suggest to you, Peter, that, that that isn't right. I don't think they should be doing this. Uh, you know, th they're not the same as the rest of us. They are, uh, you know, in that, in that respect, they are different from the rest of society and need to be more careful. It's 2021 and I follow a considerable number of police accounts on social media. Some of them are act actually quite brilliant in terms of painting a professional image of the police service that I want to see and hear from. They are discreet. They do operate at the, at the very highest levels of integrity and, and correctly. And they being able to use social media as a platform to get their messaging out, I think is really very good and is positive. 
Some officers are a bit more emotive and some officers it, would, officers, it appears, might go onto social media after they've had a glass or three, like I've certainly <laughs> been guilty of, yeah. and maybe don't post the wisest kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But they need direction. They need considered, mature, reasonable direction as to what they should and shouldn't do. And we can't ban our police officers from being on social media. That would just be ludicrous. Uh, no, but I'm just saying guidelines need to be there. And for one area where I think it's quite urgent, uh, they need to look into uh, cops who form WhatsApp groups uh, because we know about Wayne Cousins uh, was in a WhatsApp group with a number of other people. And that WhatsApp group was frankly disgusting, uh, full of homophobic, racist, sexist, uh, pornography. Uh, and to, at least two officers uh, are under serious investigation for being in that uh, WhatsApp group. So there are areas where I think uh, investigation is required. Yes, let's see what the result of all the investigations into that monster uh, show up, including the WhatsApp group and other allegations that were made against him. Let's see the result of these investigations and if there are officers engaging in vile, unacceptable behaviour, then they, quite frankly, are going to have to find alternative employment, I hope. But just combining the two strands of what we've just spoken about, mm -hmm. a supervising police officer was on social media only yesterday or the day before telling the world about the advice that he issues to his brand new recruits when they turn up wet behind the ears, completely naive, for their first day on the streets. And he tells them very, very sternly, do not set up WhatsApp groups at work. They are not a good thing. And to hear that supervising officer uh, telling us how he operates is a good thing. Yeah, that is excellent. Uh, before you go, Peter, I just wanted to say, uh, you were on the, my show last week, and uh, you, how impressively eloquent you were about the Wayne Cousins saga. Uh, and if there's anything good to come out of that, it is that it is the wake-up call the police force uh, required, and hopefully they'll get their house in order now. Yes, indeed. And I sincerely hope that one of these inquiries, but I, I think preferably I would like the one that's been announced by Pretty Patel this week to actually be called the Everard Inquiry rather than be named after the person that heads it up because then Sarah's name hopefully will become synonymous with positive change, with wrongs being righted and thereafter her name will be synonymous with good stuff rather than the actions of evil personified.